Well, it's exciting times, you know. I think, um, you know, I'll be lying to say, well, it's just another day. I didn't, you know, I try to keep it like that uh, mentally and, and get my focus to play the, you know, a great game tonight. But I know there's a lot of attention to it. I know it's a big deal. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm just, like I said, try to take it in stride and enjoying every moment of it. I think, uh, you know, I want to be this uh, to be a great day. And hopefully that today is the day, but it might not be. So, you know, hopefully I won't disappoint anybody. I don't know everybody's here to see it and hopefully we'll, we'll give it to them. Pleased to be joined by Marty on Hockey Night in Canada. Now, Marty, who taught you or was it self-taught to say, I am Martin Brodeur, I am going to show the fans I'm the greatest goalie and we're the New Jersey Devils and we're going to show the fans at the Bell Centre we're the Stanley Cup champions. Who taught you that? Well, 15 years in New Jersey. <laughs> you know, I think it's been, uh, it's been a great ride uh, and uh, that's the attitude that we have when we, uh, we jump on the ice. It's important you pick the right organization, there's no doubt about that. You have five tattoos, Marty, uh, two of them on your children, but the other three on your back, I think, help sum up why it is you covet the record for most wins. Uh, tell us about the tattoo, when and how it came about. Uh, you know what, I just, uh, you know, when I started to, to have a couple tattoos, I was like something that, you know, for me, that I wanted to, to be like, somewhat of a signification and for me, and, you know, one is courage, uh, one is dignity, and the other one was... But what I'm trying to be all about, it's about winning. So uh, they're like, you know, Japanese, Chinese logos and you know, that I got. Did you say when? What year? Uh, everything was done uh, in, during the lockout. That too, meant too, much, <laughs> too much time to kill. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about courage. Uh, how, how did you master or conquer your fears? Well, you know what? I think uh, the fears, you know, I think uh, try to have no fear. That's, uh, that's the bottom line. That's what you have to, to get to. And so for me to go out, uh, you know, every night, and I think it's, it's by playing a lot. Uh, you know, I think you, you have that, uh, that, you know, the way of playing the game and not worry about, you know, playing bad or playing good or what you do. And you just keep on rolling them. And, and I think, it, you know, it brought me a lot of success just to, to have that. And again, you couldn't do that with, with any organization. I think the Devils uh, give me the leeway of, of, of letting me play as much as I wanted to and as much as they wanted to. And it worked out well. I'll give you one name on uh, that topic, and that's Pat Burns. Tell me about Pat. Well, I mean, for me, uh, you know, Pat meant a lot. You know, he's uh, he was a coach that uh, got me my uh, you know third Stanley Cup, and so definitely for uh, especially in, in these times right now that he's going through. Um, you know, I mean, it sums it up. I think it's somebody that uh, is holding on and is doing real well, and hopefully, uh, you know, you know, he'll have the courage to stay with us as much as as possible. Well, let's go to winning then, because that's kind of neat. You won that Stanley Cup in 03, and you won the gold medal in Salt Lake City in 02, right after the worst defeat of your career in 2001 in Denver. So tell me about uh, this two-part question, but tell me about, first of all, Game 7 uh, against the Colorado Avalanche. Well, definitely. Uh, along with uh, in 1994 losing to uh, the Rangers uh, in double overtime in, in the conference finals, uh, that game was probably uh, my, one of my toughest loss. You know, I think when you spend so much time in, in the spring uh, getting so close to winning Stanley Cup and uh, everything disappeared in front of you, and it's like you didn't do anything. Uh, definitely was was definitely uh, a really a tough a tough time for me. Um, I had a hard time just watching, you know, anybody raising uh, the cup from the, the Colorado team. And usually I appreciate teams winning the Stanley Cup, but when they win it against you, it's always a tough one. Especially, though, Patrick Roy. Well, you know what? I think uh, you know we, it was it was a, such a great uh, setting to to compete against the top goalie, and uh, you know I felt one game short, so you know it but, happens. But the funny thing is, your kids. This is the neat part of that story. You went in the dressing room very concerned about the boys. Tell me about that. Well, you know, uh, you know, I came back and even talked to the media. I just wanted to to go out and see how my kids were. I didn't even give them the time of day. They were still playing shinny hockey downstairs. So I was like, all right, I guess it's not that big of a deal. So I think it, it puts stuff under perspective when you do have a family. Just shows being a great dad, uh, taking care of someone was more important in the end. Uh, just uh, on the topic of the kids, Cam Ward's on a roll again. Steve Mason, I don't know through your injury, you're going to see Carey Price probably tonight. Uh, who stood out for you? Mason thinks the world of you. Well, definitely Mason has been well. Just with the with the shoutouts that he's been uh, piling up this season, it's pretty impressive. And in, in his first year, uh, I think for him the future looks uh, looks real bright. I think he's in a great organization that uh, is hungry for winning. Uh, definitely coach with one of the best uh, defensive coach that there is in in the league. And so, uh, you know, I think uh, he's the guy that uh, I think will uh, will do well in the next few years. No dignity. 
This is, uh, this is Lou Lamorello, and I'd like to talk Calgary's in Toronto tonight, so Corey Serge and Zach Parise, you remember the story when Parise cross-checked uh, Corey, and he hit uh, Parise right back just the way Todd Bertuzzi hit Steve Moore, and this is a little thing about, you seem to respect everybody. You love Darren Langdon, Cam Jansen, you had a thing for the tough guys, and you were there to go to bat for Bertuzzi. Dignity, that, that has to come from, I guess, Lou, does it? Well, I think so. You know, I think when you grew up with uh, a man like uh, Lou Lamariello, I think you, uh, everybody sees him as, you know, a general manager, but I got to know him real well, and I think the respect of, of your peers is, is uh, an important thing. I think you never know who you're going to, you know, cross hairs with, uh, you know, at one time or two times in your career, and I think it's something that, uh, you know, that, you know, from my father, uh, when I, when I grew up, the, when he was working with the Canadians, that taught me to, to especially Lou, with uh, the way he is with everybody, is, is something that was really important to me. Because like Joey Kosher could have ended your career before you got to this stage, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tell that story quickly. Uh, Chris Terreri told you to pick up a man. Oh yeah, you know we had a first uh, first playoffs. I, I played. I was young. I was 19 years old, and uh, there was a big brawl after one of the games, and uh, you know I was just talking with the goalies, you know, being friendly, didn't really speak any English, but I was still trying to understand what they were saying, and uh, some, you know, Kosher was running around trying to hit somebody, and I didn't know it was Joey at the time, and uh, Chris goes, Marty, yeah, go pick up a guy, you're by yourself here. So now I, I grabbed the guy, and he looked at me, he goes, let me go. So I let him go. <laughs> <laughs> you never lose, you just run out of time, and we have, but you always make time for us, Marty. I said, Lou Lamorello would say, uh, thank you for all you've done for our great game. Good luck tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Ron.